one of the distinctive features of apocalyptic literature is its use of symbols and symbolic language. But the thing to remember about apocalyptic symbolism is that it is not something we take literally. The thing to remember is these symbols are literary symbols, but we don't take them literally as facts that will come to pass or things that happened in the past. But they are literary in that they express the theology or the point that the author wants to make, and he uses these as literary tools to express that point. One example of this is the symbol we use for Jesus Christ. A very common symbol is that he is the good shepherd. And this expresses his role as the great shepherd of souls and how Jesus fulfills the words of the prophet Ezekiel when in aggravation for the shepherds and leaders of God's holy people who are now in exile, through the prophet, God says to his people Israel, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. In other words, God will be that shepherd and Jesus fulfills that prophecy of Ezekiel in our recognition of him as the good shepherd. However, historically, we know Jesus by profession was not a shepherd. He was a carpenter. But the shepherd symbolizes his role, and he is aptly referred to as um, foreshadowed and prophesied in such psalms as, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Another example of a symbolic story taken from one of the miracles of Jesus is the great catch of fish, which we read twice throughout the four Gospels. St. Luke places the story at the beginning of Jesus' ministry and links it to the call of the apostles. St. John places it at the end of his Gospel and links the catch of fish with the resurrection of Jesus. In both cases, they have been at it all night, have caught nothing, but when they cast their nets on the opposite side, they have the great catch of fish. And in the case of St. John, he gives an exact number of fish in the net. And that is symbolic of the eventual catch of fish that the church will have insofar as the story is concerned. And from the standpoint of the author itself, symbolic of the great catch of fish the church has had at the time the gospel was written. I like to take it a step further when you look at the symbol of the fish in the net no matter how many fish there were, how many of those fish do you think actually wanted to be in the net? When you ponder that, and that the fish are desperately trying to get out, we remember the words of Christ to Peter after the catch of fish, do not be afraid, from now on you will be catching men. Not finessing, not wooing, not attracting, but catching men. And in that we remember Jesus' words at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, go out and make disciples of all the nations. Not suggest discipleship, but make disciples. And that works a little bit, almost perhaps even provocatively, with the image of the catch of fish, fish who are desperately trying to get out of the net. In the same way, apocalyptic literature uses symbols to express a point or a message. And uh, Pope St. John Paul II, in his audience on April 22nd, 1998, said of apocalyptic symbolism, we know that the apocalyptic images of the eschatological discourse about the end of all things should be interpreted in light of their intense symbolism. They express the precariousness of the world and the sovereign power of Christ in whose hands has been placed the destiny of humanity. And so apocalyptic literature makes use of symbols to communicate its point and communicate its message in a literary form while at the same time, we do not take these symbols literally. So what are some of these symbols that are used in apocalyptic literature? Well, first of all, we have colors. For example, red would symbolize martyrdom and suffering, the shedding of blood. White would be a color of purity or the heavenly realm. Gold, a color of triumph and royalty, as is the color purple, a traditional color of royalty. We have numbers. For example, the number seven, which symbolizes perfection. One less than seven would be six, which would be a symbol of imperfection. The number three symbolizes an emphasis of a certain quality, such as six, six, six would be a symbol of the epitome of imperfection, while seven, seven, seven would be the epitome of perfection. Or holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the perfection, the epitome of holiness. We also have the number 12 which is reminiscent of the history of Israel and the church, 12 tribes of Israel, 12 apostles. 
12 times 12 brings us to 144, also a symbolic number. The number 1,000 would be symbolic of an infinite number, a number of a great multitude or a great number. So when we see 144,000, it's the 12 apostles times the 12 tribes and an infinite number of 144,000. Sometimes we don't even mention numbers. We mention a great multitude. Other symbols are animals, such as lions and leopards and bears. We have a lamb that would symbolize something, an ox or images of a dragon or a beast, sometimes beasts that are so horrible that they are beyond description. Body parts can be symbolic. For example, eyes would symbolize seeing. Seven eyes would symbolize perfect seeing. Horns would symbolize power. Legs, teeth, tongue, and so on. Various objects, such as a throne, a lamp, a sword, scales, a scythe, jewels, crystal, certain stones, jewels, the sea, the disposition of the sea, a sea that is smooth as glass, are examples of symbols that incorporate objects. Clothing are used, garments, crowns, robes. Various time periods can be symbolic, a thousand years, a year, two years, and half a year we see in apocalyptic writings, as well as other mythological symbols that are taken from the culture in which the author finds himself, be it the Babylonian culture, be it the ancient Greek culture, or the ancient Greco-Roman culture, and also symbols that are taken from well-known stories from the Hebrew scriptures, for example, the tree of life, the river that flows out of the temple, calls to mind the river that flows through the Garden of Eden, and purifies everything. So these are just some examples of symbols that are used in apocalyptic writings and which we will visit as we examine the apocalyptic literature as found in the Holy Scriptures.